everybody, welcome to another edition of How To. I bet you're asking yourself, is today the day that we actually get to capture a waveform, Pete? It is. Stick around. That's coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome back. Hey, if you remember the last time we got together, I talked about how to use the time and voltage settings uh, to adjust the patterns so that you could get a picture on your single screen uh, of whatever it was that you were connected to, something you could see, recognize, and do something with. Uh, so let me just set here for the record that going forward in this series, uh, there's a lot of different scopes on the market. I cannot possibly cover them all, and all of them have some very strong, powerful uses that, again, I can't cover them all. The aim of this initial series is to take anyone with any scope and give them the ability to get a pattern on the screen that they can work with. All right, so before you write in and tell me, well, you can use this feature, or you can use that feature and do it, I, I understand that. This is a little something we're trying to put on the table for everyone, and that explains why today I'm using the Snap-on platform uh, for what we're going to talk about in this edition. Now this is the Snap-on Virus. It has a very capable four-channel scope, as does the Snap-on Modus, and then there's the Vantage Pro, a two-channel scope that uh, is very, very popular and very, very capable. But the way they set up to capture a pattern is different than the Pico that we used the last time we got together. So let's start with that, how to set this up to capture the pattern that we want to capture today. Okay, here we are on the home screen of the Snap-on Virus, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the selection I want, in this case, the scope multimeter. Not worried about the options here. I want the lab scope, that's what we're talking about today. And there are some presets that we can use. Uh, these are all things that we'll touch on as we go through this series, but right now we wanna keep it fundamental uh, so that everyone who's watching has a chance to put this to work at home, get comfortable with their tool. So we're gonna take lab scope. Now, as you can see, uh, I only have one trace going right now. And like we talked about with the uh, last time we were together, uh, this, the, let's review just a bit. The bottom line here is time, right? And each of these indicators, one, two, three, four, and so on, are divisions on that scope, on that timeline, with a total of 10. So there's a total sweep here of 10 seconds. The vertical scale is voltage. In this case right now, I'm reading plus or minus, well, I'm reading minus 40 and up to a high of uh, 50 uh, on this particular pattern. Now, there are four channels uh, available, four traces available on this tool. Think of each of those traces, uh, all of those channels as individual voltmeters. So that you can see four voltage readings if you're gonna do it with a voltmeter. You got four voltmeters running at the same time and you're reading them all in a graphical representation here so you can see the changes over that time. Now, the last time we got together, we talked about how to adjust these settings in order to get a pattern on the screen that we can see and do something with. And one of the first things, let's, let's go back. One of the first things we talked about was time. Now in this case, um, I'm on a, uh, one second per division for a total sweep of 10 seconds. But on this tool, uh, as we kind of talked a little bit the last time, it's not called uh, by division, it's set by total sweep. So in this case, you can see the setting is 10 seconds. In other words, I'm setting the entire sweep for that screen. If I wanted it to be one second, a tenth of a second per division, then I'd have to select the one second or the tenth of a uh, t second times 10, right, which, which would give me a one second sweep. Now we're doing something fairly straightforward, a stable voltage right now. We're working with uh, the battery today, so we're just gonna leave that at 10 seconds, all right? Now on the vertical line, um, pretty high voltages. I mean, I have a total of, of almost 100 volts. I'm not measuring that, am I? If I'm gonna connect to the battery, then I'm gonna be measuring somewhere around 12, no more than, than 15, 16 volts, right? So we're gonna go back into setup into traces channel one, trace one, and instead of using the 100 volts, I'm gonna open up that menu and set the sweep for um, 20. So we'll pick 20. Now again, notice this is not per division as it was with the Pico. Uh, well, excuse me, the Pico is, is the same way, uh, but in the Pico you see plus or minus the range, right? So in here we don't have that. It's 20 volts total display on the screen, 20 volts total display on the screen. And you can see that here now um, minus eight here at the bottom, plus 10 at the top, uh, not showing all the way to the zero line, but a 20 volt 
total range here. Now I can only read 10, so if I'm gonna measure battery voltage, that's not enough. I need to adjust where that zero falls. And on the Pico, we just kind of grabbed it and dragged it here. Um, I can actually do that with this slider tool. So we're gonna bring that down to the bottom because um, I don't think I'm going to see too much negative voltage, not worry about looking at negative voltage today. So we're going to leave it down to the bottom. Now I have my total 0 to 20 uh, on the displayed on the vertical axis, right? So then we're all set to connect to the battery and uh, get a reading, get a trace. All right, to recap, I'm going to go ahead and set my basic settings to accommodate the pattern that I think I should expect to see on my screen based on what I know about the component I'm hooking to, uh, the wiring schematic, the description of uh, theory of operation I've read up on my service information system. Again, very simple. We're going to start with something very simple, the battery itself. So we know what that is. It's a nice, uh, for fairly stable DC voltage, so I don't need to worry about uh, uh, any high peaks or squibbles, so we're not worried about that. And uh, the other thing is that uh, it, the time base is really not a factor in this case, is it? because I don't expect to see that, or I'm not looking at this point to see that change uh, over any given time. So let's just go ahead now and we'll connect the leads uh, up to the battery. Now, on the snap-on scope, it uses what's called a common ground. So channel one has a uh, common ground input that we're gonna connect, and then we'll hook up the leads, uh, the other leads to the battery. All right, and there you go, our first waveform. Yeah, Pete, that's not real exciting. Okay, okay, we're not done yet. Don't be impatient. Okay, let's go ahead and start the vehicle up so we can see uh, what it looks like with the engine running. And you're gonna notice some, uh, a drop out here on the screen. I want you to pay attention to that. We're not gonna get into a lot of detail on that in this edition, but just watch, watch. All right, let me go ahead and start the truck. That little dip right there has a lot of information in it, and I'm going to show you more about that as the series progresses. But right now, let's just focus on the voltage line. Looks fairly straightforward, a little rough. Wonder why that is. Well, let's see what happens when we take a closer look at that. Okay, now that little dip that you saw in the voltage pattern uh, is something that I'm sure you'll relate to. That was the drop, the loaded voltage that we put on the uh, uh, on the battery when we started the truck, right? It's the same thing if you measured it with your multimeter or if you performed a loaded voltage test with uh, uh, some type of battery tester. And what we're seeing again is that drop over time on the screen. And we're gonna talk about more about that in the episodes coming. But right now I wanna focus on the task at hand. Yes, this is a very simple trace. It's a straight voltage trace, but we were successful and getting a pattern we can recognize on the screen, right? Hey, little successes put together leads to great success. So let's go ahead and keep on with what we're looking at today. Now I want you to take a close look at this. This is not a stable, steady input, is it? There is some fluctuation in that voltage. Okay, I can live with that. I would expect to be some, but what I want to look at today is what if I want to take a closer look at that? Well, there are some things that we can do. Follow along with me here. We're going to go back to that trace pattern for trace number one. And I'm going to ask for uh, a feature here called AC coupling. We have it on, on both scopes, the Pico and the Snap-on, and I'm willing to bet that nearly everyone does. And what this does is this takes the DC part of that pattern out of the picture, only it leaves the AC component left bear with me you'll see where I'm going with this so we're going to select AC coupling and now not a lot of voltage you, you, you it almost dropped to the bottom of the screen there so I want to change the voltage setting to see if I can get a picture I can recognize and we're going to go to a total range of one volt and then I'm going to go ahead and bring that zero up into the center because AC goes both ways right and we'll take a look at what we have. Okay, now what you're looking at here in this pattern, that's the AC component uh, that's filtering into the battery on that DC voltage from the alternator. This is also known as AC ripple. 
Now AC ripple, if it goes beyond a certain amount, can be nasty for drivability problems. It confuses the control modules when they don't have a nice clean voltage supply. So that's one factor. It can also help us point out with charging system problems because after all, right, that's how the alternator works. If uh, it takes uh, AC current produced by the alternator, rectifies it through a diode bridge, multiple diodes as a matter of fact, and then it passes that cleaned up or that clipped off top half of the AC supply, if you will, onto the battery so the system can use it, right? And that's what we're looking at. This is what's getting past that rectifier bridge. Now, it's not much on the uh, one volt scale with a zero to zero. It's not even exceeding plus or minus 0.1, so this is very acceptable. But you see, the only reason we can see that is by getting rid of the DC component using the AC coupling uh, 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 option on the scope, right? Now, if we wanna slow it down and take a closer look, we go back and learn more about AC ripple. We know that we're looking probably at that on a, on a two millisecond to five millisecond per division to get a really clean pattern. But again, with the snap-on tool, we don't set that, that time based on a per division basis, do we? It's based on the 10 total. So five milliseconds times 10 would be 50 milliseconds total sweep. Let's go back up into setup, back to our sweep setting. And we'll select that 50 milliseconds. There we go. Now we've got a pretty clean, uh, normal looking AC ripple pattern on our screen. Granted, for many of you watching, that particular pattern was probably not the most exciting thing you've ever seen, but I wanna recap that the goal of this series is to allow any technician out there who is trying to get comfortable with their tool to do just that. I don't care what kind of scope you own, setting the voltage, setting the time settings, all of these are critical to getting a pattern that you can see on that single screen so that you can use that to help you fix a car. And that's the bottom line, guys. I want you to be able to take whatever scope you own, get a good pattern on a single screen that you can use to fix a car. And that's what we're building on here. Uh, yes, there's some very powerful features built into these new scopes. Get your foundation first, get comfortable first, and then learn those powerful features to expand the use of that tool even further. Now, the next time we get together here on how to, we're gonna put two patterns on the screen and we're gonna talk about how you can use that, that relationship to determine if there's a problem or if everything's okay. Uh, we'll keep building in this series. I hope you'll continue to watch. I'll see you next time here on Motor Age How To. Mm -hmm.